Hey guys, it's Ellie Barati from Coach Me Table Tennis, and today alongside me is Guy Benaroya. He's my assistant, former student of mine many years ago, got to top five in England, and today he is also a full time table tennis coach alongside the EBAT team. Today we're going to talk about third ball attack, which is your forehand. We're going to be focusing mainly on your forehand third ball attack to try and help you elevate your placement, the technique, and how to execute a positive forehand third ball attack. Okay, so there's four key elements that I'm going to discuss today in terms of the third ball attack. Number one is the technique, how you should play the stroke. Number two is the contact point, where you want to contact the ball. And number three is the angle of the bat, which uh, corresponds with the contact point. And number four slash three is placement how you can develop your placement and disguise your stroke and then it will enable you to generate a much more difficult stroke or shot for your opponent to return. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, so as you just saw the demonstration there, I'm gonna talk about the technique so as the ball is rising, I'm looking to try and catch the ball as it comes off the table. Then I drop my arm behind my knee, not in front of my knee, behind my knee. And I load my left leg. For you guys, right hand is your right leg. So I load my left leg and I try and open, not fully extend. I don't want to hyperextend. I want to have a small little um, break here. And then I cock my wrist back and try and catch back of the ball as I go up and my forearm snaps closed into an L shape. So I'm here, I drop, I snap, and that allows me to lift the ball up and over the net. So that's the technical aspect. The next aspect that we need to focus on is the spin. So I need to understand how much spins on the ball. I'm gonna show you on the diagram in a minute how the spin makes, uh, changes my timing point and my contact on the ball. Okay, so as we discussed earlier in terms of the contact point, we have to first analyze whether the ball has not a lot of spin, meaning float, a little bit of spin, meaning around medium amount of spin, or high, uh, heavy amount of spin. So if the ball's got lots of spin, meaning it's heavy, it's rotating very fast, and it wants to go down, when it hits your bat. So what you wanna try and do is contact the ball in and around this area. If the ball's got medium amount of top spin, uh, back spin, sorry, then you wanna try and contact the ball there. And if it's got float, almost no spin on the ball, then your contact point becomes there. So it's three different contact points and three different angles. Angle number one, angle number two, and angle number three you have to be very careful as to analyzing what the opponent has done and in terms of what spin are they given you and then you quickly adjust the angle of your bat to get the ball on the table on the other side. So as you just saw on the board, you have to change the angle according to the spin. So if I don't have a lot, of, if, some, if my opponent didn't give me a lot of spin, meaning float, then I can close the angle a lot more and hit through the ball there. Well, rather than through the ball, you spin, but spin through the ball at this angle. If it's a little bit of backspin, um, around medium amount of backspin, then I need to open my angle a little bit more and go in this point of contact. And if it's a lot of backspin, then I want to try and go right behind the back of the ball and lift it upwards there. So those are the angles that I need to incorporate depending on what spin I'm receiving. Another element you want to try and focus on is the timing, where you contact the ball. As the ball is uh, bounced and then it's rising, if you can take it before top of the bounce, that's great. It gives your opponent less time, but it makes it a little bit harder for you as well because it's low and uh, the trajectory is a little bit lower. Top of the bounce is where generally most players will take it and they will enable them to um, execute a more aggressive shot. And some players like to take the ball even after top of the bounce to generate extra topspin. It's down to you where you feel comfortable, but if it was me and I was playing against you, I'd try and dominate by taking the ball as early as possible. 
Okay, and the last part, and for me, this is for the more advanced players, is the disguise element and placement. So if you're really good at disguising your shots, it makes it very difficult for your opponent to receive your third ball forehand attack. And so what do I mean exactly by disguising? Well, number one, you've got to practice your placement. So the placement, you can practice by making sure that you change your timing point, so slightly later for down the line, a little bit earlier for the middle, and a slightly earlier for going cross court. So those are the three key elements for placement. But then when we're talking about disguise, some people, what they do is if they're going down the line, they're like this. If they're going to the middle, they're here. And if they're going cross court, they're there. And they've kind of told their opponent where they're going. With me, what I try and do is I disguise my shot initially by really rotating my shoulder around and making it very difficult for my opponent to know where I'm going. So once I've rot rotated, then I can either go down the line, cross court, down the middle, my choice. And it's very difficult for my opponent to read that from the body language. So that's a nice little tip for you guys to implement. We're gonna try and have a look at it in action. Okay, guys, uh, hopefully that will help you with your forehand open up third ball attack. Just uh, another little tip for you to try and think about is doing an exercise with your opponent. That you serve, they push long to your forehand, you do a forehand open up, but they put the bat, for example, on the forehand side, and you have to use your peripheral vision to try and go to the other side, see where, they, where the bat is and go to the other side. So if it's on the backhand side, your aim is to try and go over there. This is obviously for more advanced table tennis, but it's something for you to think about and to hopefully elevate your game when you're playing matches. You just keep an eye on your opponent and try to go where they're not. Just to finish off, I'd like to thank Guy Benaroya for helping me out today. And for more information about table tennis, please visit my website at coachmetabletennis.com and we'll see you at the next video.